Hey everyone, what's going on? Bit of a different setup as you can see, but uh, today it is a really cool chance to do another review uh, with my partner, Emma. Hi! And uh, yeah, it's been a little while since Emma was on the channel, I think. Maybe Evil Dead Evil Rise. Dead Rise. I was meant to be in Saw X, but I had a nap instead. So, <laughs> I um, hello everyone! <laughs> I managed to stay awake. <laughs> She did. Yeah, she did, which is awesome. So yeah, today we're here to talk about The Exorcist Believer. Uh, just to give you guys a heads up, this is going to be a spoiler discussion. So your forewarning is get the hell out of here. Come back once you've seen the movie or if you don't care, stay around and uh, we're going to get into this. So kind of before we get into our thoughts, uh, the director here is David Gordon Green. If you guys aren't familiar with him, he recently did the Halloween trilogy, which was kind of story by him, uh, Danny McBride, and there's another guy, I can't remember who. Um, so yeah, they're kind of basically back this time to do Exorcist uh, Believer, but I have heard that this is going to be a trilogy. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all my awesome patrons who helped to really support the channel. If you want to join Patreon, shop merch, buy a copy of my debut book, you can find a link to that down below in the description box. And also, if you want to request a movie for me to watch, I do have a link to my PayPal where you can request this to be watched as a short and reviewed with a shout out, or you can request a long form review with a shout out also, link down below in the description box. So before we dive into it, Emma, what was your thoughts on Excess Believer kind of going in and kind of expectations? Well, we talked about this in the car. So um, basically, I went in and I was like, I'm going to go in with an open mind and I'm going to go in with like maybe, I, I'm hoping it's going to be at least a three. I didn't really watch many of the trailers, same as every other movie that I'm going into these days. So I went in with like knowing nothing, just knowing it was about the two bands getting possessed. And I loved it. I thought it was absolutely class. I thought it was mint. So I think I'm a massive horror fan. Like, I love The Exorcist. I mean, if you move to the side. Signed Linda Blair. Pop Funko. And a tiny little, tiny little Reagan. I didn't want to be like a horror snob, as you see these days. And like I said, I loved it. I thought it was a really good story. What about you? <laughs> Um, yeah, well, we were just going into initial thoughts before checking out the movie, but Emma's kind of told you her thoughts. It's all good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I also really enjoyed the movie. I will say it uh, came out of this. We both have kind of like similar feelings. Uh, maybe Emma a little bit more than me, but of course we'll get into that. Uh, but yeah, overall, I uh, really enjoyed this one. Felt like it kind of flew by, especially as like a trilogy kind of start. We both agreed kind of start off like the kind of foundations for this mm -hmm. story. Uh, there's definitely plenty of places which they can go with, which again, we'll get into. So yeah, just to kind of mention a couple of things in terms of the plot, Emma mentioned it's about two young girls, two daughters of two respective different parents um, get possessed, of course, by a demon. Um, I've got right down here, Le Lemashu. Lemashu, so it's not Pazuzu this time, it's uh, Lemashu. And we just did some research, Lemashu, when I was reading up, is a goddess who would prey on mothers who had just given birth to children and they would steal the children afterwards and feast upon them. So I think it's a really good... It's a really mm -hmm. good deity to have. It's a really good sort of like demon to have instead of just going back to the same old Pazuzu, which I, I wanted like, but mm -hmm. it's it's good like reading up about it. Yeah, I think that's definitely like an interesting element that they add in here because uh, about these two daughters that are possessed, the story basically starts off with uh, Leslie Odom Jr., who I didn't know this, but Emma mentioned afterwards, it was in Hamilton. I remember, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy to go from Hamilton to The Exorcist, but hey, oh, it's one of those things. Uh, but yeah, so the movie kind of starts out, and this is not going to be a play by everything that happens, but it starts out with, he's in Haiti? Yeah, he's in Haiti. Haiti. Right? And he's with his wife, and they're kind of, you know, she's pregnant at this point, they're kind of celebrating life. He's a photographer that we learn, and something happens where he's going to take some shots inside of a church, something along those lines, and she's going back up to the room, get some rest, of course, being a pregnant woman. She's heavily pregnant at this point. Um, and the building is, get, it's like an earthquake yeah. or something, right? Yeah, big, like, disaster happens. Mm. Um, the whole foundation comes down. 
And basically, the dad, Victor, was it? Victor, Victor. Fielding, yeah. Yeah, the dad gets mm-hmm. told, choose either your wife or the bairn, like the baby inside the belly. And um, and then you don't see anything else afterwards. But it was a lovely scene beforehand because the mom was in Haiti and some little boy approached her and was just like, oh, we want to give you a blessing on your baby. And they do this like really nice like protection mm. for the baby, don't they? Yeah. Which I feel comes into play later. It cuts to years later. The the little girl, Angela, is alive. The mum is not. And she wants to get in contact with the mum. So she decides she's going to go and contact uh, mum with another little girl called Catherine, who mm. is, you know, very into the church and stuff like that. They go into the woods after school and they start trying to contact the mum because she says, oh, I can hear her all the time. And, you know, she's always with us. Um, mm-hmm. and then it's radio silence like they go missing nobody hears of them for three days and then they turn up three days later in a little barn and they don't know what's going on I will say though right I hope the <laughs> horse is alright because there was a horse <laughs> on the floor with a fever and they were like oh we need to get everything sorted and I bet you any money that horse died because they got too fixed on the kids so right. I hope that horse is alright though yeah, it doesn't kind of show anything <laughs> about the horse. It's like you find these kids in the barn and then the straight away they rush to like the hospital, of course, get like vitals. And I mean, Emma's, Emma's a nurse, so she'll know all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, of course, you know, when they get found in this barn, um, we learn that, of course, shortly afterwards they're possessed. They start acting weird. And um, and this is kind of where the interesting thing comes in, because, of course, uh, Leslie Odom Jr.'s character, Victor, we learn throughout the movie he was once a religious man, but because of the wa- death of his wife, which we find out earlier on in the movie, of course, later on in time, he's kind of not got faith anymore. Mm-hmm. He kind of doesn't believe in either of them because he's like, he believed in God, but then he thinks, well, why did God take his wife? And obviously she died in that moment before she could actually give birth to the child. So I really like that. I like that they acknowledge that he did have a religious past, but there's something, a, a life event happened. He doesn't have that belief anymore, mm-hmm. uh, which I thought was just a really little tiny detailed dialogue, but it made a lot of sense. But then on the other side, as Emma mentioned, with the daughter of Catherine, her parents are like, well, not religious nuts, but they, of course, got faith. They go to church every Sunday. Uh, they've got two other kids as well. So they've got three kids in total. And yeah, there's definitely different family dynamics. Yeah. So we were talking about it in the car on the way home. And I was basically saying like, you feel the love between Victor and um, it was what you called again, Andrea. Angela, 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 Angela yeah, played you... played by Lydia Jewett. Very well played as well. The two little girls were very very good doing what they did. Like mm. I was creeped out, and they they didn't mind getting ugly with it. And I thought that was really good. But yes, going back to it, um, you feel the connection between Victor and Angela, and you feel like you know. That's this is a good dad. This is you know a lovely daughter. They have this really nice connection. It's only ever been them two. It's been them against the world. And then you cut to Catherine, and mm. you don't get that with her and her family. You don't really see any connection. You don't really see them interacting with each other. When Catherine goes missing, the only thing that the parents say to the police is, "Oh, she's very popular." Yeah. And then when they find her, it's like, "Let's go to church." It's all very performative. I think, but it was very, Mm -hmm. like, natural with Victor and Angela. So I just think that was a really good, like... And it gets into it at the end, which we'll talk about in a second, but I feel like it it sets straight away the difference between these two families. Yeah, and having that divide, again, it kind of plays throughout the movie and it shows kind of of characters you root for because throughout the movie, like, you're rooting for Victor. He's kind of calm. He's level-headed. Of course, he's worried about his daughter, but he's taking things as it goes and he wants Mm -hmm. to help his daughter whereas the other parents especially uh, Norbert Leo Butts who plays Tony the dad of Catherine who play with is done by Olivia Markham uh, the little girl um he's very rash he Mm -hmm. just makes decisions on the go he doesn't think about it he's very snappy he's got a short temper yeah kind of let's put it that way and as the events start to unfold of course throughout you know, this demon possession and these girls kind of spiralling downhill quite rapidly. Of course, we get the return of uh, Ellen Burst, or Burston, if, if mm-hmm. that's her name. 
Uh, Chris McNeil, of course, from the original Exorcist is back. If you've never seen the original Exorcist, highly recommend watching that before you go into yeah. this one because it's a continuation. I uh, can't comment if it continues on from number two and three. No, Exorcist. so don't number two those. and three don't exist in this universe now. It's just a direct sequel to the first one. Yeah, right. Cool. So, yeah, so Ellen Burst, or Burston, how have you seen them? Uh, so she's back as Chris McNeil. We learn a little bit about what she's been up to in this entire time. Like, she's gone on to do a book. She's done, like, TV appearances. And, of course, some TV appearances have been uploaded onto YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, but we learn that she's fallen out with Regan. And Regan didn't like the fact that this book was published about yeah. her, which was, like, how she got over this you know, demon possession in the, the original Exorcist. So, of course, uh, Leslie Orden Duden, Victor Fielden, finds out about her through a neighbour called Anne, who's played by Anne Dowd, um, who does believe in the faith. You learn a little bit about the neighbour, had a backstory she was going to become a nun at some point, mm -hmm. but she had to give up a child. Was it an abortion, did she have? Yes, yeah, so she, she was about to take a vows, and then she got tempted by somebody, she had sex, and then she had an abortion, and she just felt like she couldn't go into it, so she went into nursing instead. And she is all about the faith, but the only reason she brings this up, because she said she never told anybody, but Angela brought it up to her and said her a nun name, like the, the name she was going to use when she took the faith and stuff like that so mm -hmm. it was a really good story they go and see chris and then um basically they're like well what do we need to do and chris was like well i wasn't there for the actual exorcism but i was there for the possession she goes into the house of catherine's parents yeah well actually she goes into the um the mental institution that they've got angela in first and it's the one and only jump scare that they have in that movie and it got as good and I was watching it, I wasn't expecting it. Basically, she crawls out from under the bed, jumps up at the window. A very quiet cinema we were in, and I just went, oh, fucking hell! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, she does that. She goes, right, I've seen this kid now. We're going to go see Catherine. She goes and sees Catherine. Catherine's in the room. And I think this shows how naive Chris was because she goes in the room and she's like, leave this child alone! <laughs> and then... <laughs> then the demon tricks her, pretends that the child's fine, gets a crucifix and, doot, doot, and takes, both eyes. takes out her eyes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So she's blind, obviously, at that point. And then it's, bye, Chris, see you later. You're going to go to the hospital and not have anything else to do with the movie. Um, do you want to tell them about the uh, the reference with Chris? <laughs> so, <laughs> I was watching and I was laughing, right, because they were doing the exorcism part. We're all out of the shop with this review. Mm -hmm. Um they were doing the exorcism and it shows Chris in the hospital with bandages over her eyes and she's wearing this white gown and she's got a grey hair and they're doing the exorcism and she's going like this with her hands while they're doing it. If any of you have seen David Bowie's last music video, which is in that video, he's got patches over his eyes and he's in his white gown and he's doing this. And that's all I could think of. And I was just like, they have literally ripped off David Bowie. Like, that's all I could think of. So I was giggling away. Like, this mm. nice emotional exorcism. And I'm just thinking about, like, oh, I'm a blank star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she... <laughs> uh, I've not seen that music video for reference, so I can't comment. But um, you guys have probably seen the picture when Emma was describing that as also. But, um, yeah, so, of course, as Emma mentioned, of course, Chris goes in, she gets blinded, whatever, and then she's cut to the hospital and then all the parents gather along with a pastor, along with Father Maddox, and they decide to do an exorcism in the house, right? In Victor's house. And they all kind of congregated, like him and a couple of neighbours, the pastor and stuff like that. And Father Maddox doesn't get permission from the Vatican to do the exorcism. He's like, no, nope, can't do it whatsoever. But he gives Anne, because of course, as we mentioned, she was going to be trained to be a nun, uh, a Bible and a cross and says, look, read this word for word, like do this to a T and you know, kind of jobs are good. And, you know, they get to that point where they're doing an the exorcism in the house. And it's a really cool scene as well. It kind of lasts about 20 minutes or so. The exorcism itself, it, it felt like it lasted a long time. Um, but there's a lot of happens there. Of course, we hear a little bit about what happened to some of these characters in the past. A again, you get like Victor Fielding just cool as a cucumber throughout the whole thing and played a really good part he did but he just didn't lose his head you know he kind of kept his concentration he knew his daughter was in there but he knew 
that was not his daughter he was seeing. And the mum of Catherine, who is Jennifer Nettles, if I've got that right, um, she is also quite calm. She is praying. She's following along, kind of with instructions, not touching the daughter during this whole exorcism. Otherwise, of course, that can disrupt like, the ritual. And But the dad, at first, he's not in the room, Tony. He's outside. He's mm -hmm. like, no, I can't do this. And then he kind of comes into it halfway. Uh, and he's a really frustrating character. Uh, but he plays a good part yeah. in terms of you don't like the guy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so the, the possession's going on. And as the possession's kind of halfway, nearly done, so to say, um, the demons, the demon inside's like, right, choose one. You know, choose one of the daughters, basically, to say, you can save one, the other one is gone. And both Victor and uh, Miranda's like, nope, we're not choosing whatsoever. And of course, here comes dumbass Tony. He comes flying in the room and he's like, yeah, I choose to save my daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once that happens, all hell breaks loose, literally. Um, yeah. Also, we've missed out a very, very good uh, part of the the crew. And that is Dr. B Beehive. I, I don't know what religion she's supposed to be, but she's she does a lot of like, you know, ritual stuff. And oh, she was just fantastic, wasn't she? And she's yeah. like, she's like trying to get the demons out of these kids, and the vapors coming up out of these kids. And she's like catching it. She's throwing stuff into the fire. I thought she was amazing. Like she could have just let it for me. Yeah. And that was it. But um, I agree. So they're doing what they need to do. The priest comes in because I don't know if we mentioned this already. They didn't get Vatican approval. Yeah. So. They come in, like the priest comes in after Victor goes outside and says, the fight's inside, get in. And um, mm -hmm. the priest comes in and you think he's like this big rock star moment. He comes in, he starts putting his hands with the crucifix on the kids and you think mm -hmm. it's going to be fine. So none of them choose, obviously. They're like, no, we're not going to choose. The priest here is going to do his job. And then the girls like sort of like start twisting the necks round, not really against style. But then snap the neck of the priest, like Reagan style, like it goes all the way around. And um mm -hmm. and then that's when Tony, the dad, bursts in because he's just like, Oh God, like our last chance gone. So he comes in and he's shouting, I choose there you, Catherine. At the same time, Victor's starting to get through to Angela with her mom's scarf, which grounds her a little bit. And there's like this beautiful bond between them. She's starting to come back because of like, of this love. And this is why I said like, I felt very superficial with um, Catherine's family because he just went in and went, nah, screw this other little girl. You're going to come home with me and we're going to go to church again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, he had no regard for the other one. So it was like the, the demon tricked them. So whoever was going to get chosen, that's who was going to get pulled into hell and not brought back and that's what yeah. happens they both die but then Angela comes back has a really lovely moment and it's literally just her and the dad like there's nobody else comes over and goes oh my god she's okay it's just her and her dad that's it how it's always been mm -hmm. everyone's around Catherine because she did regain consciousness for a little bit before she passed away and everyone just looks horrified because now they have two dead bodies we're assuming Catherine died. We didn't actually see her body, I don't think, anywhere. No. So I don't know if that leaves it a little bit open-ended. We don't get clarification. But let's say they are. So you've got two dead bodies and everyone's just like, oh my God, police come up. That's the end of the movie. But I was watching it and I was just like, oh, they've, they're going to get arrested because they've not had Vatican approval. You've got a dead priest. You've got a dead little girl. You've got blood everywhere. You've got like ritual stuff on the floor and you've got shackles to chairs in the sitting room. Mm. Doesn't look good, does it? And two very malnourished little girls as well and covered in cuts and stuff. So I was just like, oh, we're going to watch them get carted off in um, handcuffs. But that doesn't happen. You just see Anne, the wannabe nun, um, in the police station just talking, yeah. but you get no like clarification on if she's been arrested or what have you. Um, and then it just mm -hmm. ends with um, Angela going back to school. Mm -hmm. 
Tony and is it Miranda? Miranda in the coffee so shop. So Catherine's parents in the coffee shop, but you don't hear what they're talking about. You see Anna at the police station, and then you see David Bowie, aka Chris, in the hospital, and she's like, Victor, is that you? And then walking towards the camera, it's Linda Blair. So Reagan's back finally, and that's how it ends. It's done. Mm -hmm. Leaves it open for the next one, which comes out in 2025. So we've got to wait a little bit for that one. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be married by then. We will. We will, yeah. Um, which is going to be exciting. There is one other thing that happens, however, um, that I don't know if you touched on, but um, basically... Once the dad shouts, I choose you, and as Emma mentioned, they're kind of covered around the two bodies, we actually see a glimpse of where the girls went missing originally, and you actually see Catherine in this tunnel, and she shouts, Mom, Dad, and then like these hands like drag her spirit kind of like, down to hell mm. in the tunnel. So it's kind of like her spirit's gone forever, and of course, because the dad shouted, I choose you. Um, so yeah, I guess like we were seeing in the car and kind of saying like, you know, they've announced a sequel called Deceiver and I was saying the only kind of route they can kind of go down, especially as Emma mentioned, none of them gets arrested or anything like that, is maybe the dad, because he's a reckless character, he makes a dumb decision possibly to try get his daughter back and maybe she's kept on life support. Um, that's kind of the only real route they can go, maybe to try get her back and maybe the saying, you know, Maybe there's a way she can come back. I, I don't know. Mm. I, I'm, ass I'm assuming so because they leave it on kind of like not really much else they can do unless yeah. someone brand new gets possessed and then they call in these new experts now to be like, we need your help to fix our daughter or son, whoever it is. Um. So yeah, overall, uh, what would you give as a score? So I said out of five, it would probably be either a three and a half and a f or a four because I think it was really good. I thought it was a different kind of story, but didn't stray too far away from the original. It gave us more of a family's point of view rather than a priest in possession and exorcism point of view. Like the exorcism was part of the movie, but it wasn't the main focus. Um, and I don't know, I just mm -hmm. think it was really good. I think where it dropped off with me, it was just some parts dra dragged a little bit. You know, it just... Mm -hmm. Some of it was just, it was just long and the cinema was freezing and that's not the movie's fault. I was just cold and pissed off. But I, it's, I think four, three and a half, four is a, a good rating for a mm -hmm. movie, like a movie that everyone's given like 0. 0.5 stars to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm about a three to three and a half. So again, I think I'm going to like to just slightly a little bit more. Um, kind of like negatives, I definitely agree with you. The pacing sometimes was a little bit long, but of course... As we mentioned, because it's going to be a trilogy, this kind of like whole kind of setting the fundamentals, because when you get to see the next one, they can just cut things straight off. We don't have to go into character backstories. We've yeah. got that already. Um, and I also felt like I said this to you as well, that there was maybe one or two many characters and they don't get like enough development, but also yeah. like one character is there just kind of like as a neighbor, like supportive, but he seems a bit like comic relief. I felt like didn't really need yeah, that. Yeah, like every time like the camera went on him, he's just going, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's all he's doing. And felt I felt like he was at a concert holding like a lighter. Yeah, that would be making it an exorcism, just vibing. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like he was it. Um, there was someone who was like a pastor as well, and you see him in one scene in the pastor when the girl uh, Catherine first gets possessed, but he didn't really add anything to the exorcism, like no. at all. I think they're all there because basically um, it had something to do with the doors, right? Yeah, and then Chris says like, you know. I've, I've researched every exorcism and every culture and every belief system all around the world. And the one thing that everything have, have in common is like people and unity. And you all need to unify to get that like, together. So basically like, mm -hmm. it's the phrase, it takes a village and they literally invite the whole village because it's a small village to come and do it. Um, right. And I think that's why they have so many different people of different faiths there to try and like combat it but then i didn't know if that was hindering it a little bit because they were all chanting at the same time but none of them were like singing off the hymn like same hymn sheet almost yeah and doing their own thing from their own belief system which was cool to watch but then i'm just like maybe they should have like scripted it before they went in and just gone with the good old-fashioned power of christ <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, I know I agree, and yeah, that is basically our two cents on the Exorcist 
believe it. Um, what do you guys think of this movie? Uh, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think. If you agree, you disagree completely with us, uh, it would be cool to hear your opinion. Uh, give this video a big thumbs up if you haven't. Subscribe by hitting the red button down below. And until next time, you'll see me in the future video very soon. And you'll see Emma, hopefully, in the future as well. If uh, I'm not napping. If she isn't napping. But until then, <laughs> take care, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye.